if you've spent any time looking at solar at all, you will have noticed that there's this amazing difference in price between companies. Uh, if you were looking at a 6.6 .6 kilowatt system, you might see things for less than $3,000, all the way to six, seven, eight, nine. And that can be confusing because there's a lot to know about solar. And often what people do is, in the absence of other information, they simply look at the bottom line and make their evaluation based on that. And if we were looking at anything else that we buy, whether it's cars or fridges or coffee machines or TVs, people understand that if you look at an LG television, a 65-inch TV, and it costs $4,000, there's a reason why it costs $4,000 compared to something else which might cost $1,500 or even less than $1,000, for example. The issue that we have with solar is that we're not familiar with the brands and we don't understand what it is that we're getting so we just look at that bottom line. So I guess I want to cover some of the issues that can occur with those cheap systems. And they are a big deal. So uh, a 2019 survey uh, by the Clean Energy Council said that one in four systems was faulty. So it really is a dice roll uh, if you're buying a super cheap system, whether or not it's going to do what it says for you. There's lots of ways to save money on a, on a solar system when you're installing it. There's product choices, there's labour choices, even the smaller components, the DC isolators and conduit, or the method of installation, uh, whether or not they put the conduit externally on your house because that's just easier for them, or whether they really try and put it in, in between the, the, wall, the, the uh, bricks, for example, which takes longer and will cost more to do, but then you get the job that you want. And because most, for most people, the, their house is their biggest asset, there's a false economy attached to saving $1,000 or $2,000 and getting something which is going to be inferior. So I guess there's two types of ways, or two categories of uh, ways to look at it. So one is product. Um, there are a lot of panel brands and inverter brands and often with these, what I call cookie cutter solutions that you get with cheap systems. And what I mean by that is that they're all the same. The, the conversation happens and everyone tells you that you should get a 6.6 .6 kilowatt system, which is ridiculous anyway. But the systems are put together, you're not even told necessarily what it includes in terms of products. You may be told that it's just tier one products. Um, which doesn't really mean very much. Almost everything is tier one, and it doesn't distinguish between good brands and, and, and inferior brands. So even if you are told the brand that it is, they will often have the right to substitute, and you won't get what you thought you were getting. So you're really kind of giving up your rights as a, as a customer by op opting in for the lowest price alternative. Another issue is that as I've referred to these cookie cutter solutions, you're very rarely offered anything different in terms of products or any advice in terms of system design or anything that might be more useful to you as a customer. And maybe that's something like micro inverters if you have some shading or maybe it's a better monitoring solution. None of that will be discussed. It's just simply the product that is on offer today at this price. So, when you talk to a, a competent company, what you'll get is a range of advice and options that mean that you will end up with the best option for you. Not necessarily the most expensive option, but the optimum fit for you. The outcome of these choices, when you go for the least expensive option, are really around safety and performance. So, safety is a big factor. Solar systems produce quite a lot of current and high voltage. So in fact, there's anything up to 600 volts of DC current flowing through those cables. If they're not installed properly, there can be fires, there can be short circuits, and a lot of people have systems where something minor has gone wrong, for example, and it stops working, and if they also don't have the right monitoring in place, basically they don't even find out until their next bill or the one after, that the system's not working. So 
there is a safety uh, aspect to it and there's a performance aspect to it. So I often use the term false economy in, in, uh, in what people save. So let's say they save $1,000 or $1,500. The lifespan of a solar system is meant to be 25 years. Now, many people don't have a view of 25 years in their own homes. You might have a 10 or 15 year view. And in fact, solar will typically pay for itself in three to five years. So um, whatever happens, even if we have a 10 or 15 year view of the world, then the difference between a quality system and a super cheap system is probably about six months worth of what it's saving for you. That's it. The downside of the cheap system is that if it stops working and it needs to be removed after four or five years, which happens a lot, we, we take off quite a few systems, then it doesn't really matter what it costs you, you have to buy it again if you want to keep saving. So all I'm really saying is that it is a trap to look for the lowest price. We'd love to have a conversation with you and actually come up with the right choice of products and size and monitoring and, and the best design for your house. That way, you know, you will get a quality system. Thank you.